Hey, this is Chaz, and welcome to my world from my living room. Today, we're going to talk to Amit Pandya. We're going to talk about our almost 30 year friendship, my love hate relationship with podcasts, the all American singers, the life coach craze, and everything in between. So, sit back, relax, and welcome to my world from my living room. Hey, what's up, guys? So, today, we are talking to my good friend, Amit Pandya. We've known each other forever. We're going to talk about how uh, long that's been. I hope it's not <laughs> as many years as I think it is, but we're going to get right into it. So, Amit, good to have you here. It's great to be here. Dude, you're in my living room. <laughs> Might I add, again. And uh, this time here, you're here for my podcast. I am. Like, what do you think? <laughs> like, I I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. I hate it being that one dude, but mm-hmm. I'm like... I figure, man, I, I, I may as well. Yeah. You know? Well, what do you mean you may as well? I mean, you have stories to tell. You have things to, to teach the world. But so and does teach millions yourself. of other people. So everyone has a big story. Well, I mean, I don't know how big my story is. I have mm-hmm. a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know what the whole podcast thing is about. I know mm-hmm. there's a lot of it's like like education-based. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's all these buzzwords and stuff that kind of freaked me out mm-hmm. about it. Like, oh, you have to add value to your listeners yeah. or your watchers and yeah. you have to do this and you have to meet all these metrics. I'm like, mm-hmm. I just want to talk about things I've experienced yeah. yeah, and talk to interesting people mm-hmm. and friends of mine and mm-hmm. just kind of hang out at the house. Yeah. I don't want a big microphone in my face. I just want to chill. Exploration <laughs> can be valuable, right? Exploration, yeah. being mm-hmm. able to explore sort of your own stories, explore yeah. your own journeys. And then uh, and then from there, I think you're allowed to to make this organic, right? You're allowed to make this this value creation piece yeah. uh, an organic part of this. And there's no reason that you need to have it all figured out like when your first season or second season or however you want but, to put um, these up. You know me. You you know me, <laughs> yes. Mr. Perfectionist. Yes. Yeah. I'm not one to just throw anything out there sure, and just sure. see what happens. Sure. So yeah. I had to do a lot of research. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. had to get over myself mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I think there were moments where I was like, man, I don't want to look like anybody else because you know me. <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. not wanted to, yeah. I don't want to look like nobody. I want to be myself. Sure. I want to be the authentic article that my mm-hmm. mom and I've mm-hmm. uh, been raised to be. So mm-hmm. there, was a, there was a moment of clarity but I was like, I remember when I first told you that I was mm-hmm. doing one. You're like, oh my God, you got to have me on yeah, because I mean, we're going to have so much fun. I love it. I, <laughs> I'm very chatty. Very chatty. But I'm, I know it's because you have things to say, right? Uh, I know that like you try to live authentic life, yeah. right? You, you have people in your life who you love and who you want to support uh, and who you want to inspire, yeah. right? And so yeah. being able to do that, I think, in this particular you know, medium yeah. is, is excellent. Well, yeah, I, I, there was there was a lot to get me here, but mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I, I definitely had you top of mind, <laughs> but I'm like, I had to get through a whole season to just mm-hmm. really figure it out. Sure, sure. And essentially talking to a camera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you've seen, yeah. you've seen it, yeah? You've <laughs> yes. seen the podcast. I absolutely have, I absolutely yeah. have. So um, what do you think about it? Well, I mean, first of all, you got a great voice. I mean, you know you have a great voice, but because uh, podcasts, you know, you can, you can watch them, sure, but... There's something to be said about, you know, going about your day and having someone kind of on your shoulder, Mm. like just telling your story, right? Interesting. And it could be, because I mean, I listen to a bunch of podcasts, you know, uh, some where the value is more, uh, uh, it's more specific, I Mm. guess, Mm. right? Like uh, there are some which are about, you know, space travel and some that are about like ologies. Have you heard this ologies podcast? No, I haven't. It's great where every single one, it's about a different ology. Like, you know, like a study of mushrooms, study of light, study of whatever it is, right? Oh, that's and cool. it's this woman just asking questions of experts, right? And right. so that's great. But I think the the best part about a podcast is when you can like learn something new about the person doing the podcast, mm-hmm. about whoever they're interviewing or really about themselves. Right. Like as they're going about their day. There's right. something lovely about it just working with your day to day. Yeah. Yeah. So now being a podcast listener, because mm-hmm. I I don't know if I've had anyone on that really listens to podcasts enough mm-hmm. to know the metrics and how it works and mm-hmm. what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So hearing from your vantage point mm-hmm. Um, the podcast, does mine work and fit in that space? So so one one thing that I feel works (laughs) is that there is, like, you want to learn more, right? right? There's always sort of like the the next next part of the story. Mm. Um, You know, in in your story, and and again, I mean, part of it is that, you know, we're friends, right? Right. We've known each other for going on 30 years. Yeah. Which is is a a tough tough number to to deal with. But I was thinking about it, and I was like, wait, we met in 1995. Yikes. And it is 2024 right now. So... uh, yeah, I didn't. 
Actually, that hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a little bit just now. But, um, but like even then, like I know the the journey that you've been on, right? Mm-hmm. And and when I was listening, I haven't listened to all of them. I've listened to maybe like half of them, maybe three yeah. fourths of them at this point. And mm-hmm. when you're telling your story, I'm like, oh, I know an additional detail in there, right? right. Like oh, I know, I know where he was when he was doing this. Right. I. I know like what else was going on in his life like during that time. I wonder if he's going to talk about that. Right. Right. And yeah. so there is this element of like, okay, well, I'm engaged. First of all, I mean, again, because we're friends. But right. if I didn't know you and I and I started listening from the very beginning, I'd be like, okay, I care like what happens to this person. Oh, right? good. Okay. Like I, I care. I, I want him to be successful. Mm. Like his head's in the right place. He cares deeply about all the people around him. Yeah. Like. Like what? What's gonna happen next? Cool, right? Cool. Um, in fact, I think there could be more of that, right? Yeah, there could I know. be more of like. Got to start somewhere. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. And there's also something that can happen about, um, like in this journey that that you've had, mm-hmm. like how like how can that connect like with your listeners in terms of like mm-hmm. the what like what they're going through? They don't need to be necessarily be an artist or like right. live in New York or whatever in order to say like I have had a similar journey. Sure. Right. Sure. Uh, uh, there are there are lessons that that anyone can learn from anyone's life. Mm-hmm. I remember, and we sort of mentioned this before, but everyone has as big of a life as you. And then I, by you, I mean the ubiquitous you, like everyone, right? Yeah. Everyone has a huge life where the decisions they've made, the choices they've been able to make, they're visceral. Like they're mm-hmm. they're a core part of who we are. But like, how can we learn from the big lives that other people have as well? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, in saying that, you st- you started part of that um, part of the conversation by saying, you know, I've known you at this stage in your life <laughs> yeah so like gosh you say it out loud it hurts yeah, yeah it hurts yeah, my feelings too. Yeah. 30, 30 years <laughs> yeah, yeah so so back <laughs> then right so my vantage point of how we were and i want to talk about yeah, that yeah. part about that <laughs> moment that <laughs> sure, time in our lives yeah, sure. okay so um i knew you were coming over mm-hmm. so i i wanted to harken back to something really really fun slash okay. funny okay you ready <laughs> no you ready <laughs> okay hold on all right what is happening Let's see. Let's see. This is not going to be good. Is... <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Oh, God. And you still have <laughs> your All-American Singers t-shirt? It's a, did you ever wear it? Because it looks I, in perfect condition. I've worn it. Okay, okay. I've worn it. God, so, the All-American the Singers. The All-American Singers. All American Singers. Yes. So the All-American Singers, just so you guys know, <laughs> is, was, because uh, it's no longer, mm-hmm. um, it is... A travel show, singing and dancing, um, kids just past high school age, mm-hmm. yep. I would say. I'd say between the ages, it was between the ages of 18 and like 22, 18 and 23. Yes. I was 17 when I when so I uh, started in it. 17. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. actually you knew me since I was 16 because... Yes, we came through so, the first season. Yeah, exactly. So there were two seasons of the All-American Singers. The first one was when, because Chaz was in both of them. Yeah. And, ish. Ish, ish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the first one was when I was in high school and I Gosh. and you came and performed. Yes. Uh, and one of my good friends from high school actually was also in it, which yes. is why uh, you came to Lancaster, Ohio yeah. in, the, in the first place. Yes. Yeah, so we uh, toured the country mm-hmm. and stayed in host homes and we sang this positive show about choices mm-hmm. and... Yeah. Credos. Credos. Yeah. Oh, the credos. You know, you have a lot of choices to make in your life. You want to make the right ones. Uh, which he still you know, knows a verbatim because no, he's a genius. Which at the, at the end of the day is good, right? It's it's yeah. good. It's, I, I don't still know, remember I, I, one. I, I, Can I tell you one yeah, yeah. that I remember? Uh-huh. And I don't know. No individual or set of circumstances okay. can dictate Hate. how you think or act. It's a oh. matter of personal choice. Oh, my God. <laughs> that... It's so crazy how just like, <laughs> and, and again to the listener or the watcher here, it sounds innocuous. It's like a, it's a great phrase, sure, it yeah. totally makes sense. But the memories you get oh from hearing gosh. that like over and over again, doing the show every day, yeah, uh, where the sometimes the words you say it so much that it becomes meaningless, even when right they're they're strong words and they're they're important things to think about. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, I, I, I knew I you even, when you were young, spry, sixteen yeah, year old, yeah, and yeah. you were antsy and excited about being in the All-American yeah, Singers because yeah. it was it was cool. Yeah, it was, like it was your cool. Your friend was, was a part of it. It was great. And so that was fun. And then I left mm-hmm. and I moved to Nashville. It was mm-hmm. my first stint mm-hmm. of finding myself yeah. as an adult. So yeah. I had 10 years in Nashville. And everyone, yeah. on, he was a star in this. And so just to let you know a little bit more about this group, there were 10, uh, 10 guys and 10 girls like who were in this group and they were from all over the United States. Yes. Uh, 
and in this group of people, you know, you audition, there were like vocal auditions and dance auditions and all of that. Like, like he was a star in that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, everyone in the group was like, okay, Chaz is going to do amazing <laughs> things. Right. We can't wait to listen more. We can't wait to see more. Yeah, um, thank you. it was a, it was a great place to be fans of each other. Yeah. 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 And I think that was really a place where it was a coming of age, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Because that was the place where it was like, you're vacillating what you're doing after high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to college or maybe mm -hmm. you're, you're in a break on mm -hmm. your first year of college mm -hmm. or whatever that may be. But we're just traveling around and kind of just getting to know each other yeah. and we're yeah. appreciating each other's talents and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, my first stint after that was Nashville. Yeah. And then, you know, those 10 years of that and then mm -hmm. New York. Yeah. Now, we all your wanted to journey, be in New York. We, I think <laughs> we, we always wanted, wanted to be in New York. We're always, always yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially you. Yeah, I mean, I, I really did. Although my journey to New York was, it was almost by chance. Mm -hmm. um, so, because after the All-American Singers, I went to college. I went to the University of Michigan. Go Blue. Uh, and I remember it was Congratulations my... Congratulations on the national championship. Yes. Hail to the victors. Uh, it was like my last semester in, in school, and I knew I was going to go to law school. Uh, not because I necessarily wanted to be a lawyer, but it was one of those professional programs where you didn't have to, didn't have to take a certain set of classes in order to qualify for it. I wanted to, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, actually, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I, I was interested in a lot of things. I took a lot of classes in a lot of different areas. I majored in three different things in, in college. And then I was like, what, like, what do I do with this now? Wow. So I was like, I'll go to law school. Right. That's ridiculous. Yeah. More on that later. Um, <laughs> but... But my, my best friend, Mandisa, uh, she came over to my apartment uh, with like some of my favorite beer and pictures of this apartment in New York City. And she was like, hey, you know, I'm moving to New York. We need, next, we need an additional roommate. I'm like, all right. Yeah. All right. I just said all right. And then Jack that was Tripper. my entire life. That was, that was the beginning of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I ended up going to law school at Columbia. So I, was, I continued in New York and I was an attorney for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, after, I, I figured out pretty soon that, I, that the law was not really for me, mm. but there was no way I was going to be like a law school dropout at all. Like right. I, I had this great opportunity in front of me. I was going to see it through. Yeah. Um, but even when I was an attorney, I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm just a mediocre attorney here. I feel like mm. I wasn't, because you know, when we're talking about like the all American singers, right? I feel like right. we all enjoyed like in our own little worlds being the best. Right. 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 We wanted to be stars. We mm -hmm. wanted to be like shining lights. Right. Yeah. Uh, and when you feel that light inside of yourself dim, mm -hmm. like, you know, there is something that needs to change. Yeah. Right. And so like during my time, I, I was an attorney during the downturn of the market and like, you know, uh, from 2005, like on over the next like few years uh, or several years. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, I was able to like understand how businesses run and I was able to understand how people, even at the executive level, are flawed yeah. in so many ways. Yeah. But people are just trying to do the right thing. I mean, not necessarily. It's not really necessarily altruistic, but right. people are generally trying to do like what's right, like by them, by their companies, etc. Sure. Um, and so I was, I grew very interested in the the people element of um, yeah. of organizations. And you know what? I I ended up getting my coaching certification so I could do some life coaching and executive gotcha. coaching because it works with my business, right? I was able to like work with these these organizations, these companies, mm -hmm. making sure that people were able to attribute the right value at the right times yeah. based on what was authentic for them and what they wanted to do and achieve. And I was also able just to have fun, you know, having conversations like this. I just wanted to take this moment to thank each and every one of you all for joining me right here in my living room. I know it's a different format than your typical podcast, but this is something that felt really natural and organic for me uh, to be able to share my most authentic self with you. The people who I've invited to my home are people that allow me to think a little bit differently, and they also inspire me. And I hope they do for you as well. So if you would, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment and a question. Till then, let's continue this conversation. And I've always wondered, because I've always known you to be such a personable <laughs> yeah. person yeah. and like a lively person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and an energetic mm -hmm. and fun person. So mm -hmm. when I heard lawyer, I'm like, what is, what is that? What's uh, happening? What's, what's, <laughs> yeah. but, then, but then I'm kind of going, okay, all right, he's a genius. <laughs> so obviously he's going to use that mm -hmm. intellect to mm -hmm. do something mm -hmm. intellectual. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, but I don't want his doesn't, soul doesn't really starving for, yeah. for the fun and yeah. happiness that he ex exudes everywhere he yeah. goes. Yeah. So I'm glad that you you found that happy medium where mm -hmm. you're able mm -hmm. to help people 
and you know the life coaching thing. Mm-hmm. Speaking of life coaching, mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a moment in history and time. Yeah. I would say probably what like five, ten years mm-hmm. ago. That there was like a Everywhere. boom yeah. of like life coaches yeah. just coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. Like, what was that all about? To be fair, life coaching was such a new thing that there was no real certification. There was no real rigor when it came to it. Right. And so everyone felt like, oh, this sounds fun. This sounds cute. I'll do that. I'm just gonna call myself that because that's that's all it takes to to be a life coach. Just call yourself one, right? <sighs> which which is a little ridiculous. Um, but to be honest, like the ease of it made it like attractive, right? It's right. like, oh, that's something else I can, that's something I could identify as. Right. And so I don't have to identify myself as this other thing that feels brutally inauthentic. Right. Um, however, there is a ton of rigor that, that comes with it, right? Um, you know, when when you're when you're certified through whatever certification, I got a certification through NYU, mm-hmm. um, you know, you learn about like like organizational philosophy, you learn about like psychology, you learn, you learn about all these things and how people work together right. uh, and how like, any decision that you make in your life, it rarely just has to do with you. It has to do with all of these other factors, right. like external and, and internal. Sure. Um, and so, like, being able to actually work with people and do that, it's actually made me very much more aware of the agency that I have in my own life. Yeah. And, and how just by making an adjustment here, 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 it can make huge differences yeah. down the line. In fact, you know, one thing that I always used to do, because I'm, I'm no longer... Uh, 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 a, a practicing like life coach or executive coach. I have I've, I've continued onto the people side of things. I'm now a recruiting leader. But I want to uh, put a book but, but in no, this. No, but no. Actually, let's talk about it right yeah, now. You know, yeah. because whenever I would start an engagement <laughs> with with any client, and this would be both for executive coaching and life coaching, uh-huh. I would do I would sort of walk people through like a, a whole life model, which sounds ridiculous. However, it's just a way to like break up and compartmentalize all the pieces of your life yeah. in order to understand like what your current goals are in each of those areas, right. if you have any, yeah. what are your tolerances, i.e. things that you're just putting up with, right. and what are your incompletes, things that you have started but haven't finished. Gotcha. And once you're able to basically just do that work and name and claim all of these things that are currently happening. Love that. I love that. Uh, all these things that you're currently doing in your life, you'll actually be able to very clearly see different themes. Yeah. in in everything in your life, right? Yeah. And you can start like brainstorming, like, okay, so here are the three things, the three patterns that I'm following across like, you know, my finances, my personal life, my 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 learning journey, my uh, my relationships, all of that. There are, there tend to be just a few patterns, right? And if you're able to like create, initiate, and then follow through with new behaviors yeah. with those two or three things, yeah. suddenly you see changes across the board. That makes sense. And, and that momentum gets you going to say, okay, now I can make bigger changes. Got now, it. like, what do I actually want to do that I haven't already started, Got right? What are, what, are, what are my hopes and my dreams? I know that sounds, like, kooky a little bit, but at the end of the day, like, there are things that, you know, that maybe you've, you've thought that, oh, this is something that I want to do, but no, it's so far away from what I'm currently doing. Mm-hmm. It's, is, is this something that I really want to do? Is this something that I even want to take the time to explore? Right. Well, this provides you the opportunity to take the time to explore it, right? Yeah. And see if it's actually something that you want to continue doing or if it's something you say, you know what, that's fine. It's, it, it used to be a dream of mine. It's okay that it's not anymore, yeah. but I'm able to move with, you know, full momentum, like, towards the thing I actually want to do. So I love that. Um, so with that said, this podcast was an undertaking, mm-hmm. yeah. right? There was a lot of thought going into it. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of things that I had to get over myself like what? To get through, right? And and because... Well, first of all, I love that you said get through because when people say get over things, I'm like, you're not working through anything. You don't right. learn anything. If you get through it and you right. feel like the, the the barbs as you're kind of like Trucking fighting your way through it, it trucking through it, like unless you feel that you don't really understand what the journey is anyway. Yeah, anyway. no. So there were a lot of things I had to get through as it relates to my natural homing pigeon as a person, mm-hmm. which is... I'm all about instant gratification. I've chosen careers, yes, plural, mm-hmm. the best to, <laughs> to, to, to act, yeah. to, you know, when I take a photo, I wanna see it right away. Oh yeah, sure. I yeah. wanna see the edit. When I when I post that, I want to get an immediate, mm-hmm. immediate mm-hmm. response mm-hmm. or appreciation mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. thing that I mm-hmm. created. When I'm doing, you know, singing, you know, I'll, I'll sing and I'll do a project and I'll get feedback from the mm-hmm. client. Yeah. And or I'll see it on television mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I see the fruit of my labor. Mm-hmm. So I've chosen all these different things. I believe it's part of me and mm-hmm. how I 
move through the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so this podcast, I had to get through that mindset because this is a long game. Yeah, And I yeah. understand the long game yeah. from the standpoint of going, okay, this may not yield, this may not reach mm -hmm. the person that it's intended to, mm -hmm. yet it may take a year for it to hit yeah, yeah. its target audience, its target person, or to impact the life that I've mm -hmm. created this to be. Mm -hmm. So I took the the hard road on mm -hmm. creating this podcast mm -hmm. by starting alone. Mm -hmm. I didn't start with a buddy. Mm -hmm. I didn't start with, hey, let's get a, let's yeah, do a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Let's double our audiences. Just, let's get mm -hmm. more people right, right away. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start in a way that wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. Well, this isn't the first evolve. time. This isn't the first time that you've done something like this, right? When I mean listen to the the podcast about you writing your song, writing the song for your son. Yeah. Right? Because I remember in the story when you were saying that, you know what, it, it would have been great to get that instant gratification, right? To to put it out there and have like a ton of downloads and have everyone like talking about it. Right. But at the end of the day, like you want it to be something for your son. Right. That he can listen to, right? right. Where and that's the that's the most important thing. Yeah. Right. And so like it's interesting because in this podcast that you have, you're seeing that interplay between the desire for instant gratification, but understanding that that's not everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And and that's you know, that's the part of me that I'm the the appreciation that I have now is the process mm -hmm. yeah. that, that doesn't yeah. require anyone else. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a formula. Yeah. Like the first season, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be ten episodes, mm -hmm. and it was going to, you know, pretty much introduce me to the world. Yeah. Because like yeah. you said earlier, you know, if I didn't know you, I would want to know what's next for this yeah. person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm kind of hoping and trying mm -hmm. to glean from that mm -hmm. first ten episodes. Mm -hmm. But then the next one is like. Okay, I want to qualify those mm -hmm. first ten things that are talking mm -hmm. about all of my different creative pursuits, my parents' stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and everything in between. I want to qualify that with people that are experts in their chosen oh, sure. space, yeah. or friends who knew mm -hmm. me when, yeah. Yeah. or all these different components mm -hmm. that kind of qualify the first season. So then mm -hmm. there's a sense of progress mm -hmm. and evolution. I love that you like you're talking about trusting the process because <laughs> you know when it comes to coaching. I mean, going back to that a little bit, like. Uh -huh. With coaching, like say you have uh, like a a series of, of twelve sessions, right? Like there is going to be a time between session five and session eight or five and nine where you feel like nothing is really happening, mm -hmm. but there are things that are happening. You have to trust the process. It is the gunk yeah. that you have to go through right. before real change is made. Yeah. And but you have to. You have to yeah. trust that process. You have to know that there's going to be something, even if you don't truly understand what's gonna happen, like at the end of that particular tunnel, yeah. like you have to trust that something is happening. Yeah. Right. It's not yeah. in my nature. Though. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know, I like you, you want to check it out and you want to be like, all right, this is the impact that it had. This is the value it was. This, yeah. 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 And yeah. you know, for me, I'm like, when I go back to my through line of what this really means ultimately, just mm -hmm. like the song I wrote for Gio, mm -hmm. this podcast will almost serve as that sort of legacy piece mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Because yeah. in our generation, we don't have this type of media to leave behind. Mm -hmm. We're now in a place to where we're now and we can think about whatever I create right now mm -hmm. is going to follow me forever. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike our parents that just harken back to an old photo album, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the new version. Yeah, yeah. So if this podcast serves as anything, if it helps a few people along the way, mm -hmm, great. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, especially the way that AI is going yeah, right now, yeah. if there's a moment to where, you know, you could run this whole podcast through some sort of AI machine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you you can duplicate me and recreate me mm -hmm. because everything about this podcast. Mm -hmm. Is about my life. Mm -hmm. So if my son ever really, you know, like, that is scary. It's, it is scary. It's cool, but it's scary. It is scary. <laughs> yeah. But at least I know that I'm living my true, authentic mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that I do. Mm -hmm. This is not taking a photo. This mm -hmm. isn't doing a jingle. This isn't, you know, creating a piece of content. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a total difference. And that's why I found value in doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, granted, we're in that place right now to where this is the most, one of the more tangible long form pieces of sure, content. Sure. But I'm like, okay, I'll play mm -hmm, along mm -hmm. if this is what it takes. So what are some things that you have learned like in this in this podcast journey? Something that you weren't expecting to learn like when this all started. And I know you had an openness for being like, okay, let's see like mm -hmm. how this goes. Let's let's take the time, trust right. the process, all of that. Yeah. But what are some things that you've already gleaned that you weren't expecting to? Well, I would say consistency. Consistency and patience, mm -hmm. um, which you've pretty much articulated, 
Um, consistency is something that I lack because, <laughs> no, I do. And I mean, I think I ain't the only one, y'all. I, mean, <laughs> I know y'all. I mean, come on, stop playing. Uh, but consistency mm-hmm. because for all the things that I articulated mm-hmm. earlier, yeah. I need to see it now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I don't see it now, maybe I'm putting my energy in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe I, maybe I, yeah, maybe sure. that's hitting the thing I need mm-hmm. to be putting my energy into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'll move on to something else. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I may have stopped on a few ventures that were on the precipice of about to do mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm, yeah. But I stopped because yeah. of my instinct, my nature mm-hmm. cut me short of that blessing, right. that opportunity, right. that, you know, whatever. So it's, it's tough. That's and, tough. And so the consistency yeah. thing, I'm learning that because mm-hmm. I know with the consistency, I know, and I'm not a goal setter, which mm-hmm. sucks. I'm not a goal setter. So I'm not, I'm not thinking, I'm doing this podcast because by the third one, I should have a million followers. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I'm not think I'm, mm-hmm. that's not my goal. Yeah. I just need to get it out there. Yeah, that in of itself is a goal. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, when you say you're not a goal setter, tell me more about that because <laughs> I feel like you've been doing a lot of things that where you're like, I want to do this and now I've done it. Right. I I want to do X and, and I'm and I know you're, you're right. And I know you're, you're right. saying that like, oh, you have you've been in situations where you're almost the precipice of doing something like fantastic and you back up. This is not an yeah. unusual story. Like everyone has had that sort of journey, right? And, and you have to think to yourself, all right, well, is is that just like the fear that, oh, that could have been something? Or do you need to think back to that moment and be like, no, 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 like I, like given what I knew at that point, that was the decision that I was ready to make. Right. Right? Yeah. And I never, I never have any regrets about those moments mm-hmm. of me cutting things off yeah. or quitting too early or mm-hmm. anything like that. But at the same time, there is... I get mad at myself because sure. I'd like to think I'm self-aware yeah. um, because a lot of the things I've done was alone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There hadn't been, you know, collaborations. Mm-hmm. There hadn't been a tribe that I've mm-hmm. kind of formed. There hadn't been yeah. long-term friends because a lot of the moving I've done through my life has been solo. Yeah. yeah. So if I didn't know how to do it, I learned how to do it. Sure. And sure. I did it myself because mm-hmm. even this podcast, you know, I set up a light, mm-hmm. set up a couple of cameras. <laughs> Love it. I press. I look amazing. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I, pre- I, you know, I press record and sit down and talk. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, fortunately, you know, I'm able to now uh, have people come into my life, like my guy over mm-hmm. here, Mikkel, um, to, to be able to just simply oscillate the camera mm-hmm. to both of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, how minimal that may seem, that's mm-hmm. important to me. Sure. But I didn't know how to ask for that because mm-hmm. I've never been put in that position to mm-hmm. ask for help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when he's almost insisting, I'm mm-hmm. like, those are the kind of people you need mm-hmm. in your life. Gosh, you know what? When you're talking about... <laughs> you're sorry, I, I, sorry, this is going to go down a weird path and you might want to edit this out. I have no idea. <laughs> but... But Uh-oh. no, but there, there's something to be said because you know earlier, um, you know, before we started recording, you were talking about the the journey of of like making it in New York City, right? right? And you were talking about like like why this place is is so important for for both of us mm-hmm. for some the same reasons, some different reasons, etc. Um, but and then you're talking about like who your tribe is and who your people are. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, a good friend of mine, I mean, well, you know her actually. I won't, I won't share the name here, but you know right. this person. Uh-huh. Uh, she she almost died. She mm. uh, ended up getting bacterial pneumonia, and mm. she was in yes. sepsis, and yep. she uh, she ended up going to the hospital and was like 30 minutes away from from mm. death. Right. Yeah. Um, and, she, and she's fine now. Everything is great. She's Thank super you. healthy. She's arguably in better shape than she was before. I mean, amazing, right? Um, but, but like as she was in the ambulance on the way there, she emailed or she texted a group of like 12 people, mm-hmm. right? And she texted us being like, hey, I'm going to go to the hospital. If you want to stop by, that could be cool. And then a few hours later, she said, okay, so I'm actually going to be put under for several days. Yeah. Uh, so, and, but I mean, you're still welcome to come visit. All of us, I don't know how we did it. We did it without even like talking to each other. We ended up on this system. Like she was never alone during like her week in that hospital. Yeah. Right. Cause I mean, her, her mom was close by her side almost the entire time and her husband, et cetera. But uh, like we, they, we, we were always there. Right. Mm-hmm. And it struck me. I was like, wait, who are my people? Who are the people that I would text mm-hmm. like in a moment like this yeah. where I can, where even when I am not. Uh, in the state to understand that I'm being taken care of. Mm-hmm. Like, who are the people, like, 
who would be who would be part of that group, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, like having the people who support you and, and people who know you, even if they know parts of your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and who will be there in, in the good times, the bad. Yeah. But people people want to help each other, yeah. like, and and having that, having like have, now that you've experienced this idea of like being able to like ask for help or ask for collaboration, right? right? I don't say help is not the word. Like right. ask for it's collaboration support. and support in creative yeah. efforts. I feel like that's it's going to unlock and continues to unlock these opportunities for yeah. you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Um, but dude, our friendship spans for 30 years. I yeah. still can't get yeah. over that. Yeah. But I will gladly do, do you accept that. Like, we, so there was a tour bus and there was a sign seating on the tour bus and we sat next to each other on that tour we bus. Did. Yeah. We were seat we were, we were, we were seat bus mates. buddies. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. It's yeah. so funny. Like this started from the, the very beginning. But yeah, I, like looking back on that group, like yeah. it is not a surprise to me that you and I, and then like it's Dante. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like we're, like we are the ones that ended up in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, with that said, this has been so awesome. Uh, just having you here, mm -hmm. just having a different perspective of our friendship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you've grown, where I've grown, mm -hmm. how we know each other, mm -hmm. but how there's still a through line yeah. of our consistency mm -hmm. as friends. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you. Yeah. I appreciate, I, you, I appreciate you as well. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. And, Absolutely. And thank you for doing this podcast because I think it's, even though I've known you for this entire time, like being able to understand like the, the nuggets that yeah. really drove decision making. I mean, yeah. it's, it's something that interests me in my professional career. And so, of course, I'm interested in and how my friends deal with that as well. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, listen, you've heard from my friend Amit. Y'all follow him, <laughs> all the things. You, He may be your next life coach or your next <laughs> whoever, but uh, it's been my pleasure once mm -hmm. again uh, to be with you. And uh, yeah, without mm -hmm. further ado, I guess I'll say goodbye mm -hmm. for now. Have a wonderful day.